happened here. Listen, I got this email the other day and, and I, I wrote down some of the highlights. It was kind of a long email. Oh, by the way, if you don't know me, they call me Motorman because uh, a Motorman is any police officer assigned to the motorcycle division. I've been teaching the police motor officer techniques to the average rider for more than 20 years, and I'm the maker of the Ride Like a Pro video. I've got over 800 videos on YouTube. So if you would, subscribe, click on the little bell. You'll get notified each time I come out with a new video, usually two, three times a week we're doing a video. And you can look through the 800 and some odd videos I've got on YouTube. But anyway, I got this email. It's kind of long. Uh, and I've gotten a lot of similar ones. So I'm, I, I wrote down some of the highlights. This is from a guy who says, I moved up from an 800 Suzuki and I got a new Ultra. That's what we have back here is an Ultra. I said, I've dropped the bike so many times. I'm getting better at picking it up. I guess it's a good workout to do that. He said, I've made a fool of myself so many times at bike night, I no longer go and meet my friends. Uh, you know, that's pretty bad. And, and you know, when you drop your bike, you're, you're at a bike rally, everybody runs over to help you pick it up, but it's, it's an embarrassing situation. He says, I'm thinking I'm just a doofus. I guess he got that from one of my videos. Should I sell my bike and quit riding? I don't know what else to do. And he repeats this. He says, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Can you help me? Obviously, this guy. You can act like a man! What's the matter with you? Sit this how you turn down the Hollywood Pinocchio that uh, cries like a woman? <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? What is that? Can you help me? Obviously, this guy is this right. And yes, this is a common problem. And I'm going to go over exactly why. You don't go into specifics in this email, but I'm going to go over all the reasons I know of why people drop their motorcycle. And I'm going to do it while I ride. So come along with me. We're going to talk. We're going to ride. And I'll give you a bunch of tips on how not to drop your motorcycle. So let's talk. Why do you drop your motorcycle so much? Well, I'm going to tell you a little story about a guy I knew. And this is, uh, oh, I guess about 18 or 19 years ago. This guy was, at that time, probably his late 60s, been riding all his life. So he would consider himself an experienced rider. But he had a, a BMW a Cruiser. Uh, if you're not familiar with those bikes, it's the one they used in that James Bond movie. Nice looking bike. They didn't make it but maybe two years or so. But anyway, they were equipped with power assisted brakes. Now at the time that this, uh, this drop that he had occurred, he had been riding the bike for about three years. So you would think, you know, three years he should be very familiar. Those brakes were very touchy. It took a, a lot of getting used to. I I'd, I'd road tested one and and I remember that, that, you know, the slightest movement of that brake lever or the brake pedal. And yeah, it was very touchy. It took some getting used to. But after, you know, two or three years or whatever he was riding it, he should have been well used to it. Well, he's pulling out of a parking lot and he's going to make a right-hand turn. And he looks to the left. He's waiting for traffic to clear. He said there was a car in front of him. And the car in front of him started to take off. So he's looking to the left and he goes to take off. And then he notices that the car in front stopped. So he grabs a handful of front brake and down he goes. And he, uh, I think he broke his ankle, the bike fell on top of him. Anyway, he, he approaches me because he knew that I do expert witness work for motorcycle crashes. And he says, hey, I, I, I got an attorney, I'm gonna sue BMW for having these power brakes. And he tells me the story of what happened. I says, so you got your handlebars turned to the right, you're taken off from a stop, and then suddenly you've got to stop again because you weren't looking ahead and noticed the car stopped. You hit the front brake with the handlebars turned and down you went so hard and so fast the bike fell right on top of you. He says, yeah, but it wasn't my fault. It's BMW's fault for making their brakes too touchy. And of course I asked him, I said, how long you had that bike and whatever it was, two or three years. I said, you don't know that the bike's got touchy brakes? He said, I know, but you know, it's still BMW's fault because they stopped making those power brakes on their motorcycles. And I said, well, I'm not going to take the case because it's completely your fault. So that's probably reason number one why people drop their motorcycles is from hitting that front brake. 
especially if you grab it or snatch it at low speeds with the handlebars turned. So don't do that. If you can't first straighten up your handlebars, well then you need to really be careful about squeezing that brake rather than snatching it or grabbing it. And I realize that sometimes that's easier said than done. But most of the time when I see this happen, it's usually at you know, Biketoberfest or Bike Week or even at a bike night, the guy's got the handlebars turned, there's no emergency, he hits the front brakes and boom, down goes the motorcycle. And that's really uh, just an experience with the front brake. Don't hit that front brake when the handlebars are turned at low speeds. Make sure the handlebars are first pointed straight ahead. The next reason why people tend to drop their motorcycles is not the weight of the motorcycle. It has nothing to do with the bike being top heavy. It's not the bike's fault. It's your lack of knowledge of how to use the clutch and the throttle. Using the clutch and throttle or having the ability to do so and coordinating them properly takes some practice. Without that practice, yeah, you're a drop waiting to happen. Now, knowing how to use the clutch and throttle doesn't mean that just because you could take off from a stop without stalling the motorcycle, that's the stuff you should have learned the very first day on that motorcycle, is how to coordinate the clutch. And I see this a lot especially with people that are shy about using the clutch and throttle, they take off extremely slowly. Even if they're taking off and going straight, it takes them like four seconds to get the bike going. Now, I, I haven't timed it, but I'm guessing you should be able to go from a complete dead stop to releasing the clutch in about a second to a second and a half, if you know what you're doing with the clutch and throttle. And I'm gonna show you, cause I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a right turn up here and I'll show you another mistake people make because of their lack of knowledge of the clutch and throttle. So they make a stop, no traffic coming, and they let the clutch out all the way before turning. You got to use that friction zone until the turn is completed. If you let the clutch out all the way, you're gonna go straight and almost cross, or you might even cross that double yellow line. If you know how to coordinate the clutch and throttle, you'll be able to stay in that friction zone, that sweet spot, until the turn is completed. And then you let the clutch out completely. It sounds simple, but you know, I, I hear so many people and they, they call themselves experienced riders. And like I've said this a, a thousand times, if you think about it, you've been riding for 20 or 30 years on your instincts, your instincts are wrong when it comes to riding a motorcycle. The proper technique is the opposite of your instincts. That's why it takes a few hours to get the handle of the proper techniques. Clutch and throttle, a little bit of pressure on the rear brake, and it's absolutely amazing what you can do with a 950 pound motorcycle. I know that I was amazed by this the first time I saw it was on a TV show. I was watching police motor officers doing their monthly training. And this was of course before I was a motor officer. And I couldn't believe what they were doing with their bikes at low speeds, whipping those bikes around like a toy through extremely complicated and very tight courses. Shortly after watching that show, I, I went to motor school and I quickly figured out that the 20 years of experience I thought I had meant absolutely nothing. The only experience I really had was going straight on down the road, making nice big three acre turns every once in a while and coming to a smooth stop. I had no idea how far a motorcycle could lean. I had no idea that you could lean your motorcycle to its limits at seven or eight miles an hour as long as you knew how to use the clutch and throttle and put a little pressure on the rear brake. So that is extremely important. It will stop you from dropping the motorcycle. You can practice this. I tell people this all the time. Practice first in a straight line, doing the slow race. Try to go as slow as possible. First try it with the clutch and throttle in the friction zone with a little bit of pressure on the rear brake. Then you should get to where you could do it with no rear brake, just using the clutch and throttle and ride at a slow walking pace. Remember to keep your head and eyes up, always looking far ahead of your path of travel. Never look down 
or down at the gauges or your hands your hands are there believe me they'll stay attached to your arms no matter how slow you're going so there's no sense in looking down at them keep your head and eyes up practice this in a straight line and then I hear people say doesn't that cause excessive wear and tear on my clutch well clutch is a wear item every time you use the clutch it's taken some wear off of that clutch but so little that it really doesn't matter and if you're a type of person who duck walks their motorcycle every time they got to make a u-turn well while you're duck walking it you're also using the friction zone to move the motorcycle along the only difference is you got your feet down there and your feet aren't pushing the bike forward when you're duck walking it your feet are just following the clutch and throttle so you're in the friction zone and I guarantee you it takes a lot longer to be in the friction zone and duck walk your bike through a u-turn than simply having the ability to whip that bike around through that u-turn using the friction zone and a little pressure on the rear brake in addition motorcycles almost all motorcycles now are equipped with a wet clutch that means it's cooled by oil if your father told you you should never ride the clutch while well, he was teaching you to drive well cars are equipped with dry clutches they're not lubricated by oil but you would still have to use the friction zone in a car if you're in bumper to bumper traffic or if you're backing into a parking space you'd never let that clutch out all the way once you let the clutch out all the way the slightest movement of the throttle will cause the vehicle to lurch ahead uncontrollably so learn to use that friction zone it shouldn't take maybe 30 minutes of practice to get the hang of it and when you're practicing using the friction zone if you're worried about the clutch after every oh, five or ten minutes or so of practice let the bike cool off get out of the friction zone cruise around 10 20 30 miles an hour get out on the highway whatever let the bike cool down for a few minutes and then go back to practicing in my ride like a pro video i show you i believe it's four or five different exercises that will teach you how to use that friction zone using the slow race and other tactics i highly recommend you get that video if this guy who wrote me the email had that video and actually practiced what i showed him in the video he wouldn't have to ask this questions he would know exactly why he's driving his motorcycle so what have we got so far how not to drop your motorcycle never hit that front brake at low speeds with the handlebars are turned and even if they're pointed straight ahead don't snatch or grab that brake just a gentle squeeze that's all it takes and I've also heard from people that say when I come to a stop at a light especially if I get somebody on the back the bike feels very unsteady why does that happen well that happens because you're probably using the rear brake for your final stop so the correct way to do this is whenever you're coming to a stop use both brakes just before the wheels stop turning you should release the rear brakes and begin putting both feet down that's what i said both feet if you're on a 950 pound motorcycle and you weigh 200 pounds and your passenger weighs 150 or more you need both feet down so your feet should hit the floor hit the ground the exact moment the wheels stop turning so the final stop that final a two mile an hour or so should be strictly with the front brake just don't snatch it or squeeze it and keep your head and eyes up if you tend to look down as you're coming to a stop chances are the bike's going to get unsteady and you probably will go down so keep your head and eyes up use both brakes just before the wheels stop turning and you begin putting your feet down release the rear brake and do the final stop with the front brake that uh, should take, oh, if you went to a parking lot and practice your stops for 10 or 15 minutes at most, you should get the hang of it. If you try to stop your bike with the rear brake, and I, I'm able to do that, I, I've got the skill to do that, but if the wheels stop turning and your foot is still on that rear brake and the other foot is up on the floorboard, the bike has already started to fall over. You don't even realize it, but it's already starting to fall over. Now you have to quickly put your feet down. And what's going to happen? It's going to feel unsteady, just like so many people tell me happens to them. Don't let that happen to you.
check out this little scooter. I don't know if I'd be out on a road like this with a, it's probably a 50cc scooter, but you know, I guess it's legal. I'm going to pull over here and show you what it means to actually be able to control your clutch and throttle. I'm going to stop here and I'm going to take off from a dead stop and I'm going to count we'll see how exactly how long it takes to go from the dead stop to the clutch fully engaged all right here we go 1001 1002 just under or about two seconds if when you take off from a stop and it looks like this and you're duck walking and duck walking and then finally let the clutch out oh man if you got cars behind me or behind you at that time you're waiting to pull out onto a busy road yeah they're gonna be blowing the horn they're gonna be pretty mad learn to use that clutch and throttle do not fear it your clutch and throttle are your best friends I see some people treat their throttle like it's a IED from Iran and it's going to explode if you get too rough with it that's not the case now I'm going to show you a, a duck walking U-turn this is what so many people do that's why I say when you do this you look like a doofus but by the way this road I, I've measured it it's, it's actually a total of 26 feet so I'm in the friction zone because I got to let the motor do the work I can't push the bike forward with my feet so I'm duck walking this motorcycle in the friction zone yes it's causing some wear and tear and it's taken quite a while quite a while in that friction zone to duck walk this bike around Now I'm almost into this drainage thing on the side of the road. Come on, don't do that. Learn how to use that clutch and throttle. I'm gonna show you now what it should look like. By the way, I'm gonna show you now what it should look like when you know what you're doing. I'm going to dip a little bit to the right. I'm going to turn my head and eyes all the way. And look at that. You don't need 28 feet. This motorcycle turns in less than 18 feet. So 26 foot wide road. As you see, I got all kinds of room. And you might ride like a pro video. I show you a step-by-step -step approach. You don't want to start with the U-turn. There's a couple of things you're going to do before you make that U-turn. You hear that scraping sound it's just a warning it says you've reached the lean limits don't go any further but you got to stay in that sweet spot of the friction zone got to learn to coordinate that clutch and throttle it's a lifesaver it makes riding so much more enjoyable combine that with the proper use of your head and eyes for instance I want to make a u-turn right here I'm going to use my head and eyes and look over my left shoulder as far as possible because that's where I want to go nothing to it there was no chance of this motorcycle falling over it doesn't matter if I had a passenger on the back I've done this with people who weighed up to 300 pounds on the back of my motorcycle in fact I've got a a video up there where I'm on a guy's bike the guy weighs I think he said 280 pounds and he's got ape hangers I could barely reach and I ride him through an entire course making him several u-turns in a row and I'd never ridden his bike before and each bike is a little bit different but I know the techniques I know that they work on every single motorcycle and I know how to use those techniques to their fullest if you use the techniques a little bit you're gonna be a little bit better rider use them all the way for maximum effect and you'll be a superior rider you'll be riding like a pro till next time